So when I first got this film, I made a post and said, "Super looking forward to try this new film." And minutes later, I got a comment that said, "Hmm, I don't think this is technically a new film. It's very possibly a reboot Kodak Aerocolor 2460." What is Aerocolor, and what is reboot film? Hey guys, this is Sam. Welcome back to another episode of Reflex Lab. Sent me some films to try out. They did not ask me to make this video, but I think it's a good opportunity to share with you guys what I've learned from this film and my thoughts on this type of film in general. This film is called Reflex Lab Pro 100, 36 frame process C41. Reflex Lab is very transparent and honest about what this film is actually made of, which I appreciate. So I can find more information from the source material and try to understand the color and the feature of this film better. On their website, it says this film is reboot from Aerocolor 2460 film. Kodak Aero Color Film is a type of color reversal film specifically designed for aerial photography. It was used for such as mapping, surveillance, and remote sensing. Before DJ, I took over. <laughs> This Kodak Aero Color 2460 film is only sold by Kodak in bulk. The only option I found on the internet for buying it from. B and H photo where you could get a 250 feet roll for about $1,600. Even that, it's no longer available. So we don't even know what is the minimum order is nowadays. And this, it's where the film labs like Reflex Lab come in. They purchase a bulk amount of this film, cut them and reboot them into 36 frame. Roll and repackage, rebranding, and resell them to us. So us will have access to this type of film instead of have to buy thousands of dollars of the same film. So far, I've shot two rolls of this film: one roll of portraiture and one roll of traveling street scenery photos. Since this film is designed for mapping, I was very curious about how it's gonna handle skin tone. So I did a portrait test first. Today we're testing the Reflex Lab Pro 100. I've never shot this before. This just got sent to me, and we're gonna try it out. This is our model Emily. We got some pretty colorful wardrobe, so we can see how this film does with different colors. This roll was shot with my Canon 1V with mostly the 50 millimeter prime lens. As you can see, this film doesn't have color masking. If you compare this with the regular Kodak film, that looks yellow, but this one looks more transparent, and there is no frame number or anything imprint on this film, and both sides of the film looks. The same compared to the regular Kodak film. There is the shining side and the matte side. So this one, if you are scanning it yourself, be aware which side is facing up. Some scanners are confused and renders a very red tone. This can be easily corrected when home scanning or when done by a more professional lab. This also says on their website. So after scanning and a basic conversion with Negative Lab Pro, the color does look very odd to me. It's overall very desaturated,、uh, with a lot magenta. I think I overexposed this a little too much to make it look this magenta. You could try different. Pre-colored setting with Negative Lab Pro to find your ideal color tone. After this, I also fine toned the skin color in Photoshop. Only judging by this one roll I shot, I think it definitely takes a long time and a lot of work to get the ideal skin tone. After my intensive color editing.
I think this film looks. How should I put it? Look like film. This film can give you that vintage, nostalgic, color shifted look. That's what we call the film look, right? Without editing, this film can appear somewhat flat and low contrast and low saturation. But I'm quite surprised with how much editing this film can actually handle. I mean, from this to this, there is quite a lot of room for color editing. Actually, well, that's if you want to spend the time to edit your film scan. I know a lot of people who choose to shoot film, so we don't have to do tons of color editing. So just to see the skin tone differences, I also shot a roll of Kodak Gold. I mean, I know it's illegal to compare 35 mil to media format, but let's let's just look at the skin tone real quick. I think the films like Kodak Gold, it's much easier to work with. If you look at these two images, my straight out of scanner file looks almost identical with my edited final images. It's cleaner, it's more consistent, it's more accurate, and I don't have to do almost any color correction to get the right color I want. This film might not be a good choice for portraiture, but what about everyday carry, street travel, just casual photos? And then I shot my second roll with my Minota X700 in Miami. Since this film does not have integral color masking, direct interpretation can be made from the negative. Objects are recorded in color complementary to their natural colors. So, according to the Kodak 2460 data sheet, with this roll, I tried a more direct way to convert the negative. First of all, you still want to color balance your negative, and then just go to the tone curve and invert each curve according to the histogram. The color actually turned out not too bad. It's still pretty flat, but I think the base color looks pretty good. It can be easily edited. I just boosted up a little bit of the contrast, add a little bit of saturation. I think some of these looks pretty decent. This film has a lot of green cast in the shadow, and it can render red very well. They look like old film, so I think if you're into the vintage and the nostalgic color tone, you can give this film a try. All right. Overall, to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna shoot a whole lot of this film. I mean, I don't shoot a whole lot of 100 speed film to begin with.、Um, at one point, when I was in Miami, one night we were eating at this really cute diner, and I was trying to take a shot of this neon sign. Without the tripod, 100 speed is just not doable. That's why for everyday carry, I would rather use 400 speed films because you never know what you're gonna run into. <laughs> I think this film is really for people who likes the vintage old photo look and only planning on shooting during the bright sunny day outdoor or with a flash. And also, I think this film 
could be a cheaper option. Back the time when Kodak went skyrocket. <laughs> But as of the time I'm making this video, I think the price of at least 35mm film cooled down quite a bit. Nowadays you can find Kodak Gold 200 and Ultra Max 400 both around $11 per roll. So I think price wise, Reese Food Film doesn't have that much of an advantage anymore. But that being said, it's always good to have options and it's always fun to try new things. And all right, this is it for this week's video. Thanks to Reflex Lab one more time for sending me these films to test out. I hope you enjoy this week's episode. If you do, go tell your neighbor to subscribe my channel <laughs> for more Sam Try Photography stuff content. All right, this is Sam. I will see you next time. Bye.